I'm so excited to share with all of you a project that we've been working on over the last few months, Phoenix Odyssey. Um, particularly with how much everything has changed recently, it was so important for us to find a way, well, a sustainable way to, to not only support you while we're unable to be playing, uh, but also when we're once we're back on court and training and playing opportunities come back. So we're extremely passionate about helping you to understand yourself a little bit better and providing some tools for you to make decisions on your volleyball journey. Phoenix Odyssey does encompass a cost of $15 per month. Um, and pro throughout this presentation, I'll detail what's included in this. So while we see this as an extremely valuable addition to our pathway, it is separate to our Phoenix programs. Um, however, the structure of the program within Odyssey will support athletes in preparation for AYBBC and also athletes who are just looking to develop their volleyball across this season. So we'll move to the next slide. Martin, can we go to the next slide, please? Thank you. There we go. Sorry. Um, so Phoenix Odyssey is supported by the app Sportly. This is a, an athlete management system, which is a common inclusion in a lot of national programs, um, which allows you to participate in a training program, track your training load in individual sessions, record daily wellness measures, and just to understand more about yourself and your habits. So in alignment with our Phoenix teams and programs, we're also going to use Sportly to support them as well. And the next one. So a huge focus for Pathways at Volleyball New South Wales moving into the future is the development of the exceptional athlete. So some things I want you to keep in mind as we move through the presentation in your journey as an athlete is where is the exceptional athlete created and when is the exceptional athlete created? We want you to think about areas outside of the training environment which may contribute to your success as an athlete and what you can do to promote high performance in all areas. <clears throat> So we understand that across both the indoor and the beach seasons, there are so many different programs that you might be a part of across school, club and state as well. And this does mean that you are exposed to an extremely high training load each week. So Phoenix Odyssey is here to guide you to prioritise where you need to perform in any given week and help you to understand how you can manipulate your week to best prepare for success. So I want to make it clear, I'm not just talking about on the court, I'm also talking about your performance in other parts of life, which, which may be important to you. An exceptional athlete is not just someone who is a good player, but also someone who's committed to bettering themselves in every aspect. So as we move through the program, participating athletes will learn more about their acute and chronic load and how the comparison of the two can influence performance. So large consideration for us, is the impact the, the past few months has had on everyone's ability to train and play. Managing your load is going to be critical in ensuring you're not increasing your risk of injury and in returning to play. So for those of you who haven't heard me speak about this yet, research indicates that a week-on-week -week training load increase of 25% or more can increase your risk of injury by up to 50%. So athletes who engage with Phoenix Odyssey will learn about the use of high-performance measures such as rate of perceived exertion, which is the RPE, and wellbeing questionnaires to gauge how you're feeling on any given day or leading into a training session. So I understand that uh, tonight may be a lot for you to take in, but as I mentioned, Phoenix Odyssey will progress each month to provide education around the different areas of high performance. So you have the best opportunity to embed these things into your daily routine um, and maximize your return to the volleyball court. Each month, we're going to host a, an educational workshop to introduce you to a new concept and how to monitor this for yourself throughout the month within Sportly and how you can view this information. This will be an opportunity for you to review your own data from the month and see if any trends have emerged. We want this program to support you in creating your own awareness around how your performance may be impacted by external factors. Across the program, you'll develop an understanding of five different high performance behaviors and learn to create some high performance habits. So this is our schedule of education for the program. Each month we'll have a different focus. So we're gradually building for athletes to get the most out of it. I won't go into a lot of detail for tonight, 
And I'm going to leave the physical training for Martin to go into a little bit more detail about later. But I do want to provide you a brief overview of each module and some key points uh, that we'll expand on throughout the program. So the first measure I'm going to talk about is daily wellness monitoring. So the five factors you can see on the screen are wellness measures which will be tracked daily within Sportly to get a better idea of your overall well-being to guide performance. I want you to have a read through these and consider this. There's only one measure which directly relates to physical training. This is reflective of the holistic journey we want you to take as athletes in the Odyssey. As I'm sure you're aware, nutrition is critical to performance. This is where we'll look to engage with industry professionals to speak to Odyssey athletes in growing understand an understanding of nutritional considerations. The points you see on the screen are just some of the considerations of a high performance athlete fueling themselves for performance. In addition to this, there are some clear impacts that dehydration can have on performance, not only on the court, but in an athlete's mood and can also lead to levels of distraction. We wanna provide athletes in the Odyssey with strategies as to how they can measure their own levels of hydration at home if they want to, and the impact that hydration has on performance. As I'm sure you're aware, it's easy to justify that athletes need more sleep than that of the general population, just as a result of the increased daily energy expenditure, but also other factors as well. Educating our Phoenix Odyssey athletes around the effect of sleep will allow them to find their individual athlete sleep schedule and can have an array of positive impacts on an athlete. Particularly in the context of AYBBC, it's very relevant for athletes to understand different recovery strategies and what the big rocks of recovery are to be able to repeatedly perform at the highest level. This will lead into the focus of our final month around recovery and the benefits of rest. So in alternating fortnights to the workshop, we're looking to engage with industry professionals who are exposed to the high performance environment to provide contextual examples and educate around the um, importance of holistic athletic development. These will be relevant to the focus of each month and allow for athletes to ask questions and understand each element a little bit further. And the last thing for me is the program dates. So Phoenix Odyssey will begin on the 1st of November and will finish on the 31st of March in 2022. Challenges will go live on the 1st of each month and workshops and education sessions will work in alternating fortnights, as I mentioned. Uh, so we are going to look to onboard athletes live on Zoom next week on the 28th. Um, but athletes who sign up after this will be provided with a recording to be able to familiarise yourself and get, on, get onto the team within the app. It's important that you understand we're here to support athletes in New South Wales in their journey, but the benefits that you'll get out of Phoenix Odyssey are dominantly self-driven and a reflection of how much you invest in yourself. Uh, put simply, you'll get out what you put in. We are so excited to be able to continue to provide programs which support athletes on and off the court, and particularly with what we've all experienced over the last couple of months, one that's robust and continually evolving. We would love to have as many of our New South Wales athletes join the Phoenix Odyssey as possible. And as we've alluded to throughout the presentation tonight, provide opportunities for our athletes in the performance landscape. Uh, I'm just actually gonna hand it back over to Martin to talk about their training program. Beautiful, thanks for that composure. My mouse is so sensitive. So <laughs> thank you, thank you, Laura. That's okay. Um, also more information on our website. If you have any other questions, uh, put me through an email. I am available on there. So guys and gals, just to add some context, I didn't say this at the beginning, we chose the name Odyssey for a reason. One fun fact, Odyssey is a group of phoenixes or phoenix, I don't know, <laughs> whatever the multiple name is. Uh, but an Odyssey is an epic journey. And the goal here, as Lauren did a great job of articulating, is we, we want to support and help you gain more awareness and momentum for yourself to achieve your best. And if you pull back to the very, very, very beginning of the presentation, be so good that they can't deny you. If you're only looking to improve on the court by being on the court, you're missing 
a lot of opportunity. And I will tell you from experience, it takes a lifetime of testing, of trialing, of learning, of data points, failed attempts, successful attempts, okay? Not being committed, then being recommitted. It takes a lot to learn about yourself and how to get the best from a day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month. And yes, this is attached to a 2021-2022 conversation, but we are building the Phoenix Odyssey to support long-term athlete development. The sooner you start learning about yourself, what good sleep is to you, how hydration nutrition impacts you, and what I'm about to get into from a physical training side, the sooner that you start to really get in tune with that, the more you're going to be able to squeeze things out, the more you're going to be present and ready for opportunities. And that's really the type of athlete that we're looking for. Okay. We're going, and many coaches, I'm sure David Beard sitting there nodding his head, right? We want to have a self-aware athlete who knows what's up and who can contribute and create value at every point. Okay. So moving into my side, and this is really a great opportunity I see for me. Like I'm, I'm genuinely excited to provide strength and conditioning on this app. Um, I've been studying how to train with volleyball specific for probably close to 20 years now. I have learned a lot, done a lot, have lived a lot of really interesting lives. And I feel better about the program that I'm going to be offering through this app than anything I've ever done. Worked with national teams back in Canada, multiple national or national team camps with, with different uh, groups. FIVB groups overseas. So I, I've worked with the beach volleyball athlete. I've been one myself. I'm really excited to offer this. I'm going to go through some of the layers and some of the elements. I obviously am not going to go deep into the technical stuff, but I really want to share with you some of the pieces here. So obviously breath and state control. These are some of the things that we did at the beginning of performance camps last year, but we're going to have a, a light program coming through it to talk about carbon dioxide tolerance. And to develop your ability to manage stress, the better you are at managing stress, the more you can show up in a performance environment because performance is stress management, okay? Movement potential, okay? You're all younger athletes, you're growing, you're in the middle of your, your strength speed curve. There's a lot of interesting things happening. The conversation around movement is not necessarily big strength, big weights. It's how do we get the most out of your joints without hurting you? And that's a huge conversation. So I want to have the healthiest, strongest, robust athletes at the end of a season. I do not want to be dragging a bunch of haggard, broken, injured, in pain athletes to AYBBC. Okay. We've been very sensible with how we've worked through the load of camps. There's a lot of breaks. There's a lot of things, but it's also a very long season and you have an opportunity to potentially compete a lot. And it's really important that there's a layer of development that lives off of the court to support your own court performance. Shoulder health and vertical jump. If I had two things that I wish that I could have focused on my entire career, it would have been those two things. If every single season I focused on jumping one inch higher and keeping a healthy, strong shoulder that improved year on year, I might still be playing professionally. Okay but I focused on other things. I wanted to lift heavy. I wanted to do other things that actually took away from me being a great volleyball player. But fundamentally, and this comes from a podium potential presentation through the AIS, they did a study of beach volleyball over a span of two years, ranking the best athletes in the world, studying who are the top medal contenders. Jumping higher and hitting harder are the two most important things in volleyball. And I will be focusing on the injury prevention side of jumping higher and the ability to jump higher. Conditioning, okay, conditioning is two things. One is, is a single capacity, okay, how much work can you do? But conditioning then is the repeated efforts and how quickly you can recover from a piece. Beach volleyball is hard. It's 30% harder than it is playing indoors. Moving in the sand is tough. 45 minutes, 55 minutes, three set match. I want you to be able to hit as hard, jump as high, play as hard and strong at the last point as you did in the first point. 
And that is your ability to buffer work and your ability to recover in shorter periods of time to very different but important overlapping pieces. And the, the last one's challenges. And that one's just gonna be fun, okay? That's gonna be some mental, mental games of us doing certain physical feats as, as a culture, playing around with those. They're gonna be short, they're gonna be painful, but they're gonna be great. And, and we're gonna work with you guys to, to in, enjoy it, okay? So th this is more explorative, but that's gonna be a cultural piece. What I do wanna do now is take you guys through a little bit more of the season development. Now, my original plan was to create a bunch of graphs and offer you guys you know, high science. And fundamentally, it, it was just too much information, okay? So I just do wanna talk about phase one and phase two, okay? October through what would be the December holidays leading into the, the camp. Now that phase, phase one is gonna be about short and long range strength endurance, okay? So by strength endurance, I mean, your ability to perform many repeated efforts with a short or a long range of your joints. Okay, so this is gonna set up our jumping. Okay, our ability to do movements well, many times in a row is gonna condition us in our ligaments and our talent, tendons and make us bulletproof. Okay, so higher repetition, low weight is really gonna make our tissues more robust to support phase two, okay? V-ball mobility, joint health. We're just gonna look at creating more space in our joints so that we can get lower to pass, okay? Get wider, control our rotation of our torso to support our hip, and then also our shoulder health. Our base conditioning, okay? So we're gonna look, look at the next three month phase, two and a half month phase, as the base, widening the base, okay? So that is gonna be our capacity widening that base so that we can do more work. Jumping balance, okay? A lot of us are gonna have some nagging injuries from indoors and volleyball is a very one-sided sport, hitting on one side, jumping from one specific sequence. We're gonna build a balanced program on how to train and balancing out the muscles, balancing out the joints. Um, really, that's actually quite fun to be totally honest with you, uh, but we're gonna focus on balance first before we get into phase two. So I'll explain in a second. And the last one is shoulder health. And, and, and shoulder health constitutes a lot of different things, but your shoulder is floating on your back, okay? And at this moment in time, we're generally speaking hunched over a computer and our rotator cuffs and our scapula, which is that shoulder blade, can get stuck. And if that shoulder is stuck and we lose the control to move it all around, up, down, okay, backwards, forwards, then the shoulder, which is not meant to do this, has to become your scapula. So the body's really interesting. Something's not working well. Well, I'm just going to borrow a little bit from here, and I'm going to borrow a little bit from there. Fundamentally, that's when you start getting tendons and ligaments, or you get to start to getting some interesting pieces where you think, oh my goodness, I, I'm going to have to stop here. It's when your body's not necessarily working and drawing from movement where it's supposed to be drawing from. We're gonna make sure that the shoulder health is set up for phase two. Moving into phase two, which is gonna be our squad camp moving forward from that. Okay, short range and long range power. Okay, so now we're gonna get a little bit more explosiveness. We're gonna convert that strength, endurance and abilities of our tissues to do great work and a lot of it. We're gonna convert that into more explosive, more dynamic, ballistic movement patterns so we can jump higher, okay? This is not a conversation of jumping more to jump higher. That's not what this is. This is setting up our joints and our movement so that we can. And I, I'm promising you, it's really amazing stuff. Volleyball mobility and joint health too is just gonna be an evolution of that, okay? Evolution of our ability to utilize volleyball specific movement patterns, and it's especially the rotation of the shoulders and the hips to be able to support the shoulder. Top end conditioning, now we're gonna take that base and we're gonna now create repeated efforts, which is gonna challenge our ability to recover. Okay, so we increased our capacity to do work. Now we wanna do increase our capacity to do multiple pieces of work and then recover better over time. That means that in the, in the middle of a game, you have a big rally, you are recovered faster than your opponent. 
which means that you can make the next move, you can keep your foot on the gas pedal, or it means it goes to three sets in a high temperature game midday, AYBV season then in end of March this year, so it's going to be a little bit hotter. We have to be conditioned to be able to be our best in heat, early morning, third game of the day, whatever. I want us to be the most conditioned athletes to be able to make that happen. Last one is jumping explosiveness, which comes back up into that short, long range power. Okay, to be able to explode. And I'm going to go on a bit of a tangent, but I've been reverse engineering. Who are the best athletes in the world right now? What do they look like? And what's the physicality? From the time when I was playing early 2000s to, to the mid 2012, 2013s, athletes got bigger, taller, stronger, more, more robust. And that was what I looked up to. The game's changing. Okay. Power to weight ratio. I'm not saying skinnier athletes. That's not what I'm saying. It's about higher power to weight ratio. So generally they're a little bit leaner, which allows them to have more power because they're not moving as much. So the conversation is not about weight. Okay, so I don't want us to go down that pathway. Is I want us to get as efficient as possible by training what we're doing here, where we're talking about phase one and phase two, so we can have a higher power to what we weigh ratio, so we can jump higher and move faster and support our bodies better. Okay, very very important piece. So coming back into that explosiveness, we want to be able to jump higher, and we want to be able to jump higher at the end of our match. Okay. Last one's hitting power. I want us to finish the season hitting the strongest we've ever hit in our lives. Jumping higher and hitting harder. We are going to win championships with those attributes and set ourselves up once again, because I want us to be healthy and pain-free while we're doing that, not making sacrifices. I want us to then be able to set up year on year. Okay. So very ambitious, very excited. Whoever is going to hop on board with this, really pumped to support you in your journey.